One billionaire climate activist, as well as donor and friend of the president, has been a vocal opponent to this project, a very vocal opponent. He's Tom Steyer, the founder of the $20 billion hedge fund, Farallon Capital Management, recently launched a social media campaign to persuade the president to block the pipeline. Now he's upping his efforts by supporting an independent report by Consumer Watchdog out today that examines the Keystone Pipeline's impact this time on gas prices. And Tom joins us exclusively on this news from San Francisco. Tom, great to have you back on the program. And it is, uh, in a way, perfect timing to talk about gas prices because they are on the way up. Uh, and consumers are looking at the price of the pump and saying, what's going on here? What exactly are the findings here uh, in, uh, in this report? How is the Keystone Pipeline exactly going to raise gas prices? <laughs> Good morning, Betty. Well, what the, uh, the report by Consumer Watchdog says is that the pipeline would take the tar sands oil, which is currently being shipped to the Midwest of the United States, and ship it to the Gulf Coast, where it would then enter the world market. And right now, the Midwest of the United States has an oversupply because there's no place else for the tar sands oil to go. And as a result of them shipping it to the Gulf Coast, if the uh, pipeline is built, the price in the Midwest of gasoline per gallon would go up by 25 to 40 cents. So since the price right now is about $3.40 in the region, that means it would go to $3.65 to $3.80, which is a consumer cost to the people of the United States of three to four billion dollars. Well, it is a huge cost, but do we know for sure, Tom, that that oil that's being transported by the pipeline is going to be for export? Do we know that a large part of that is going to be for export? Well, we do know that the reason they want to build this pipeline is twofold, and they've stated this clearly. They want to get to the world export price, and they want to develop it a lot faster. So we do know that they get about $30 a barrel less in the Midwest of the United States than they would if they could get it to the refineries at the Gulf Coast. So yes, that's a world price where they'd be competing with Mexican oil and Venezuelan oil at the price they want in much higher volume. And they're not getting that in the United States. So yes, I think we know that this is primarily an export pipeline. It goes through the United States, but it does not go to the United States. Tom, how did you get involved with this report? Because as we had mentioned before, this is an independent report, but how did you get involved with this? We've known the people at Consumer Watchdog who are consumer advocates. It's a nonprofit organization um, for years because they're California based. And they, I had talked to them about my frustration about the pipeline, and they said, let us examine what the impact is on the citizens of the United States, mm -hmm. the consumers of the United States, and see if it's good for them or bad for them, Tom. And this is a result of their independent findings. Uh, Tom, some might say, though, because it's in dispute that this pipeline is really going to hurt the climate. As you know, there have been conflicting reports, even reports out from, uh, from the government, uh, from the White House, that, that show that perhaps there may not be an actual impact on the, clim uh, on the climate, on the environment, that maybe this is yet another way to offset what seems in dispute. You're trying to offset that with now a focus on gas prices. Well, let me comment for one second, Betty, on your statement that it's in dispute. And let me just clarify that for the people who are watching. The State Department said that developing the tar sands faster would not hurt the environment because it, that building the pipeline would not hurt the environment because the tar sands were going to be developed faster because they had alternative ways of getting the tar sands oil to market. Right. That's turned out subsequent to the State Department's finding. And by the way, the EPA found the exact opposite. But subsequent to the State Department's finding that they could always get it to market somewhere else, that's turned out not to be true. Because the primary alternative pipeline was to go to the west coast of Canada through British Columbia. And British Columbia turned down the pipeline. In addition, on July 6th, there was a terrible rail car explosion carrying oil In and Canada, 50 yes. people were killed. So the idea, the three th ways that they felt that they could automatically move the tar sands oil to market if they didn't approve this pipeline were either the pipeline to the west coast, rail, or trucks. And it's turned out that their alternatives, which they assumed were gimmies, aren't gimmies at all. In fact, there's a real question about whether they can get this, uh, the tar sands oil to market without the, the Keystone XL pipeline. 
Tom, I understand that there's a, a, still a lot of debate, and there's still a lot of uh, you know, there's still a lot of questions around uh, ar around the environmental impact, around the, uh, the the you know the alternatives. Let's put it that way to the pipeline when you talk about climate. But uh, I still want to get back to my question, which is, uh, have you found that then because there because there has been that debate on the climate side, that perhaps it's more beneficial now for you to say, look, this is actually going to hit consumers' wallets through gas prices? Well, there's no doubt that, this, that an economic finding that it costs American consumers three or four billion dollars a year to have this pipeline built is something that bolsters our case. And we, we would like to have a stronger case because we really strongly believe this pipeline is a huge mistake. But from the point of view, uh, it's not an alternative argument, it's one more argument.